So now I'm going to do a couple of uh, videos on the op amp that we are using. An op amp is an operational amplifier and for this class we need to use one when we are working with the strain gauge. So I'm going to go over using the LM324N which is the one provided with our class. Notice that it is a quad op amp meaning that there are four different op amps on one single chip. So, you know, on the left-hand side, starting at one, we have the first three pins are the first op amp. Um, always remember, again, that the notch here is the, the top for the chip. So the first thing we have to understand is the, uh, the diagram symbol for the op amp. If you see, it's a triangle, and often it has five different inputs. Often only the two voltage inputs and the output are shown but let's just go through this. If you see the plus sign here, it does not mean charge or positive voltage or anything like that. It is what we call the non-inverting pin, okay? I know that might be confusing at the moment, but I think we'll see how that works later on. The minus is for what we call the inverting pin. Again, these pluses and minuses have nothing to do with charge. At the top, you'll see um, the voltage that we need to the external voltage that we need to run the chip to make the chip work, and then the bottom will be wired um, either to ground or to some other voltage. We'll talk a little bit about more, that later. But for right now, the important thing do you see is for the LM324N, I have the pin, the pin numbers also written on this diagram. So you can see that the output is pin 1, the uh, non-inverting pin is pin 3, so on and so forth. Again, look at the pin diagram to determine that yourselves. So always look at the schematic. So before we get to the strain gauge and the configurations that are needed for the strain gauge, I want to go over a simpler example that kind of shows you some of the behavior of an op amp. Um, so this is what we call a comparator. A comparator will compare two voltages and tell you if they're different. So in this case we have a fairly straightforward circuit with two, um, potenti uh, two potentiometers hooked up to the inverting pin, to the different pins, the in the non-inverting and the inverting pin. Um, we're going to power it with our six volt battery pack um, and then we're going to hook it up to just one of our LEDs. So at this point you should try to build this circuit. So go for it. Okay, so now let's look at the potentiometers. Now remember that as we have the potentiometers wired, they're going to act like a voltage divider. We can see that right now the light is off. So let's check the voltage at A here and B. So the first one I'm going to check is the yellow wire. And when I do that, we see that it is... 2.8 volts, when I hit zero volts, and when I do the green wire, I see that it's 3.14 volts. So let's rewire these back where they were. And now I'm going to change this. So there it goes, it turns on. I didn't change the green, so I don't need to worry about that one. I just want to look at this one. And notice that it is now slightly higher in voltage than the green line is. So before, when it was lower, it was off. And when it was higher, it was on. Now, again, let's just look at the voltage here. We have 3.43. Remember, the other one was, was in the low threes. Now, Let's look at the voltage coming out. So that's the one going straight from to the LED, and we can see that it's 5.29, right? 
All right. So what's going on? So let's go through this again. Now remember that the inverting pin is pin two. So let's check what our voltage is at the inverting pin. In this case, it's 3.15. So let's write this down. 3.15 volts. Remember our inverting pin is represented by a minus sign, right? Now, what about, the? now we see that it's on, what about the voltage of the, at the non-inverting pin, I need to get this back in, the voltage at the non-inverting pin was 3.43, right? Now the three point, so we saw that the voltage of the output now, let's do that one. The voltage of the output now is, I'll tear that one out too, we saw 5.28 volts. All right, now let's just play a little bit. Let's just change this. Oh, now notice that it's off, so let's check this. What is the voltage here now? We see that it's 2.85. Now remember that pin three was our non-inverting voltage, which is the remember, rep represented by the plus sign. We didn't change our um, inverting pin, so that means that and so let's check our output. And we see that the output is exactly zero. So let's again, let's go over exactly what happened. We saw that when we had a higher voltage at the non-inverting pin than at the inverting pin, we got an output voltage that was pretty close to this value. Now it's not exactly that value and, and that's beyond the scope of this course. We saw also that if the inverting pin was of a higher voltage, then it went towards ground. And in fact, it went towards the lowest voltage. And this is what we mean when we talk about a comparator. So it, if it sees that the voltages are different, if the non-inverting pin is higher, it will rail towards the high voltage of the power supply. And if not, it will rail towards the low voltage of the power supply. In this case, that's ground. So this just gives us some sense about the kind of maximum minimum behavior of what an op amp does. Now let's try to take this knowledge and apply it to a, a more complicated circuit and a more common circuit, such as we're going to use in the strain gauge.